Hey guys, this is Dr. K again. Um, what we're going to do is uh, have a short video on transferring the data over, uh, correcting absorbance for concentration, and then how you calculate reaction rates from your data. Again, uh, the links that you see on the screen uh, right here are for the software. If you need a Windows or a Mac version, you'll notice they're both there. I didn't mention that in the other video. So the first thing you'll want to do is download the software and use the password substance to get to the uh, files you need. And make sure before you leave class on Monday or Tuesday, depending when you do the lab, you save those files to your flash drive. So you will need a flash drive or somebody's flash drive. You can even uh, get on the computers in the back and email them to yourself, but you still need a way to transfer the data over. So. Having said that, let's get started. This is Logger Pro. Uh, again, we're going to open a file, and I will actually use the same file that I use for all of these, but I'm going to open. I saved mine to a place that I could find uh, pretty quickly, uh, but you can save them in a desktop folder. That's what I recommend. And again, uh, I've noticed with this program that I'm using, the cursor is actually not quite where it should be. Uh, this data starts around 36 seconds. So what I want to do is not I'm highlighted in the graph right now. I don't really want to uh, take that data. I want to take the data actually from the spreadsheet. Sorry, my mouse tends to double click. That's around 0.19 in this case. And then I'm going to drag down. And I want to get, again, the usable region of the data is probably around there. So I'm going to copy that. And you can use shortcut keys. I'm just doing the uh, uh, menu commands because that's what everybody's familiar with. So there, open up Excel. I've copied my data. I can now paste it in. There's the data. I am going to adjust the time. I know there's two second intervals. That first time point is going to be zero. The second one's going to be two. I highlight the data, grab the corner, and drag down. And now I have absorbance in this column. And I have time in this column. Again, this is exactly the same process that you did in the previous, uh, in the other video. So if you've watched that one already, uh, you should be pretty good at this by now. The concentration, we use the Beer Lambert Law. And I will type the equation in, but it's equals absorbance divided by epsilon and beta or E and B. Uh, the product of those two numbers, B is actually 1, so we don't usually include that. It's going to be 1.3 times 10. You notice I use E to get my exponent to the sixth and hit enter. So that's the molarity and then I'm going to drag this down. And so these are concentrations of the reactant, and these are the absorbances, and these are the times. Now, if you want to calculate the slope between any two points, and in, we're, in the lab that we're doing, you want the initial slope or the initial rate. What you do is you say equals, and then you have to make a parenthesis, and it's between that point and that point, that's your concentration change, your change, your rise divided by your run, and you'll need parentheses because it's a difference. It's that point minus that point. So that defines the rise and the run, and that's the rate of the chemical reaction. Now, if you remember, in order to get, this is rate of reaction, or sorry, rate of concentration change. If you want rate of reaction, you have to take into account stoichiometry. Now, I didn't say this in the lab. I'm just realizing as I'm making this video. But we're going to assume that the stoichiometry for the dye is 1, uh, coefficient is 1. So we're going to assume that the rate of reaction is simply the negative, because it's a reactant, times the rate of concentration change. So in other words, it's really just equal to negative this number. And so the number is exactly the same. 
As far as significant figures goes, absorbance, I think, is probably giving us about three significant figures. So in this number, you have about three significant figures. So for my first experiment, remember this concentration change is in molarity and the time is in seconds. The units, which I'll just type over here, but it doesn't really mean anything to Excel. The units are in molarity units per second because the rise is in molarity and the run is in seconds. So I hope that helps you guys. Uh, you'll have to do this with four different experiments. You'll do it with the concentration of the dye and the bleach being 100%. And then you're going to make the concentration of the dye 50% by diluting it down leaving the bleach concentration the same and remeasure the rate. And then you're going to switch and have the dye concentration be 100% and make the bleach concentration 50% and rerun the experiment. And from that, in looking at the reaction rates as you change those concentrations, you should be able to get the rate law for the reaction. In addition, for the fourth experiment, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be changing the temperature of the solutions by holding the, the solutions in hot water uh, inside a beaker. And then transferring the warm solutions over to the cuvette and rerunning the reaction and measuring the rate constant. Um, so I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, you know you can always reach me at.